Hello, everyone, and welcome to another day with me and Amir, as we are going to be covering a hard gameplay for everyone today. Yeah, this heart is one of the players that's currently in contention for the rank one spot worldwide. So, uh, they usually, on average, will have the lower elo teams, meaning that they have to put in more work to put in, or they have to put in more work to fill up for their teammates. Right, absolutely. I mean, right now, I mean, Heart, I believe, is actually almost in contender. Yeah, with like 10,000 RP. And, uh, and right now, actually, one of the interesting things about this comp is Heart is actually playing with double melee. So Heart, uh, iconically, can be known for her Peacemaker ultimate being able to CC enemy teammates while uh, the secondary DPS, usually a ranged one, can hit them from outside of the ultimate. Um, utilizing its really high strength and being able to see pretty much anyone but hearts not going to be able to do that this game so we're going to be able to see how uh heart here is going to be carrying without utilizing peacemaker for that traditional usage yeah yeah i'm also wondering what hearts build now because we got the new crit chest piece but i'm not sure if they care about going 100 percent crit as we're seeing a slightly different build than most crit characters run uh getting plasma arm instead of any sort of crit arm piece and we're going tiara which isn't really built often anymore no it's definitely very I, I think the plasma arc itself is the more interesting for sure i wonder if it's being utilized to help with the routing you know getting to the screen zone maybe better for uh, this part player good location for the farm Probably wants to get for some griefing as we see a few it's actually just one V2ing. Martina not being too much of a character this early. Uh, his his movement throughout these fights, like making sure that he can't get stunned by the Hyun Ryu, but also making sure he's always in range to hit the Martina, like I, I can definitely see why he's up there in uh in the leaderboard right now. No, 100 percent Actually, one second here. I do believe for some reason the sound in this game is incredibly loud. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. I hopefully hopefully everyone was able to still hear us uh talk, but uh yeah, I I don't know why, but that was just extremely loud on my end. So I've I've turned it down. Hopefully it's a little bit better for everyone. As a yeah, we're just I mean we're gonna be that was some crazy movement from early game, just the high mobility that Art is able to have. She has that shorter range, but it, she does so much damage. And if you can utilize her uh, her triple dash, it really can put a lot of pressure on, on teams. Yeah, I think Art is one of the harder ADCs to play because a lot of her kit is locked behind using her W and E very well. And also her R is, it, it is one of the like biggest throw abilities because if you use it incorrectly you can take a winning fight and just instantly lose it but because of heart being able to get a bit of extra range when she presses w your timing on it is very important using the dash to make sure you're never really in threat is also very important like this character is one of the one of the giga brain adcs but if you learn her she can Start just carrying games on her own. Oh, for sure. I mean, we we have some really good ones in NA as well. And I mean, they are massive playmakers like Pie Master and Batar. And yeah, a piece Peacemaker, I think, is the like game breaker for heart players for the simple fact that it is a button that 90% of the time you just shouldn't press the button because the button will yeah. just throw the game for you more so than actually win it for you. So knowing when to press that button and when not to press that button is probably one of the most crucial things for heart players in general. A lot of characters can kind of just say, hey, you know, I'll throw R for extra damage or I'll throw it for extra utility. Heart is the one of the characters where there are fights where you just never even want to look at the button. It's just not a part of your kit. Yeah, and that, that's that's exactly it. <laughs> Sometimes this button is just... I think there's actually games where you could viably say that you probably never press Peacemaker. Yeah. And also getting the tree. I wonder if we're just going to slam it into our boots, I assume? Yeah, yeah we're just going to slam Alexander. It also looks like we have the... Uh, the wristwatch in our inventory, so it looks like we're probably going radar. And we did go blink too, so we're not going to be rushing it. 
makes me confused on what we might buy up here if we do decide to purchase. Yeah, I'm, I'm also interested to see where this goes. The, the main thing that I know is that most likely because she's running Tuxedo, we are probably going to go into the Tuxedo upgrade, the new item, the Gilly. That's pretty common now. I've been seeing on a lot of ADCs taking that, that like quick upgrade. Oh, we are. Oh, it's not going to be uh, radar. We're going cube watch. It's the cube watch tech. So I've seen a couple player uh, characters run this. Not necessarily ADCs, but a lot of um, characters like Aiden have been running this a lot more. Even Debbie and Marlene's have been seeing this item. I have not really seen this item too much because I think most people, when they're deciding to go cube watch, they usually are running pack ops instead. And since they have the same passive, they're willing to just slot their arm piece into a different item. But honestly, like I, I need to see a few more people run this because maybe it is still good. I mean, I could definitely see it. I think there's, I think there's benefits here. It's a question though, like, is it better than something like Raider? But then Raider is a fourth core, so we are saying, hey, you know, we're not spending as much credits, not as much investment into Radar, which is probably still statistically better. But Cube Watch, cheaper and uh, able to be more tempoed. Like at this point here, I mean, we're on three items on heart rate now for before BZ. Super cheap, very effective, and I guarantee that this is probably almost as strong as if we had uh, Radar over Cube Watch right now. Plus, this allows us to actually go blink to, meaning that we have a bit more range to play with, and it looks like we're just going to be playing really safe, making sure we're never actually caught by the Martina, because Martina is known to kind of just E forward, ult, and one shot someone. Yeah, I kind of wanted out. Actually, I think Heart, Heart played that really like they were a traditional ADC. Which normally you don't see most times, like like, a, like we mentioned, like, you know, we see a heart dash in, goes like straight into the fight, immediately activates like Peacemaker or like causes a bunch of aggro and then Peacemakers. But because it's double melee uh, frontline for her, she really is just like letting them take all of that aggro, put all the focus on them, all the abilities go out and then triple dashes in and clean sweeps. Yeah, we're also seeing the, I'm pretty sure it is GPNBG. Um, I don't remember what the... DP stands for, but they are night vision goggles. Um, but yeah, that puts us a full build already. It is yeah. night two right now. The, and I think that's I think that's some of the benefits of this build. And look at all these cheap items. The most expensive item right now is the mithril on the headpiece. Uh, yeah, that we can test a battle zone for, it. and we're grabbing another mithril because there's a fight going under that we just lightly miss out on, but. Yeah, I mean, being able to hit full build this early and then pump all the rest of your items into your teammates is very useful. Also, we might be able to get attack skill 3, which for heart matters a lot because any sort of in-combat movement that we can get, in-combat mobility being the uh, movement speed that we get from attack 3 can be very useful on this character. Oh, 100%. Now, obviously, full build on night two took a little bit of RNG luck. You know, that we were able to get that RNG off the mob. But realistically, we could be four item right now. And technically, that last mithril that we got from the objective would have been our fifth. But if we, like, remove some of the, like, luck here. So we say, you know, we didn't get a drop from a mob. We didn't get that alpha because we were contested in BZ. That's still four items pretty early on here. And then we're already a hundred credits. We, because I think our last item that we got from the uh, the wolf would have been the tree that we're contesting, anyways. And like we're only a hundred credits off of it. Like we would have been able to full build by day three. Yeah, yeah. So the efficiency is looking like that. That team is here. And look at that. Just <laughs> just trying to poke, yeah. trying to put pressure. His team's not here. I'm not sure where. Magnus or Darko are, but uh, Hart really tried to like scare them off at that point. Uh, the thing I liked a lot there was that we walk up, auto attack, instantly E backwards because we're fighting a Hyunwoo. We just, we know that we can't be caught by the, uh, by the truck because if Hyunwoo hits an E on us, we are just dead. Yeah, and we can't, we can't afford to be dying at that kind of uh, moment there in the fight. Not yeah, if you gone. I've noticed a lot of players don't realize it, but an early death on day three can really mess up tempo, forcing you to have to go to a kiosk uh, a lot of the time when you're 
planning around contesting an objective or just removing 250 credits when day three, night three is a lot of people's buy timers is, uh, it just makes you feel very off for the rest of the game. No, absolutely. Plus also, uh, another thing to bring up about this heart specifically is running Penny Pincher. With a build like this makes perfect sense. I mean, the, the cheaper your build is, the 15 credit matters more on being able to just get these quick buys. So now we're full build plus tax skill on heart. And doesn't need to spend credits on anything else for the rest of the game other than, uh, you know, food, cameras, vision, or buying for their team. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm a big fan of her having seven cameras and a recon plus another another seven regular cameras in, uh, in her inventory. On any sort of ADC or any sort of carry, you need vision of the fight, you need to know what's going on at all times. And we're just seeing him dash forward knowing that we have two melees in front of him. And the second that we have a melee that can contest us in the Camillo, we're just playing safe, instantly blinking away from him. Like, we're taking this fight in a way that we're always safe. We still have the ult as well, so if this fight ever does start to go south, we just press ult and it doesn't matter anymore. Well, exactly. We just we just have that space and the dispersion coming in from the blast. <laughs> oh, and then sadly Lennox is not able to get away as a bike hits him in the face. One other thing too about cameras specifically is I don't know what happened in this patch when the mobs changed, but cameras are in abundance now. I'm finding that like every game now I'm running eight, twelve cameras sometimes i have like seven surveillance cameras with no binoculars in my inventory it, it everything <laughs> just drops cameras lately um i didn't check to see the exact amount of changes to bats we have in the game but i do know that we have a few bats in more favorable spots where you're not starting to like run off of your farming route to go and find these bats which is very beneficial but I would like to see a few more zones get binoculars because having to run over to hotel when I want some binoculars is very annoying. No, for sure. I I mean, I'm a little blessed. Uh, I'm usually always ending in like factories and cemeteries, which is a bat in binocular central. So maybe yeah, that might be why I'm seeing nice some more. I think um, a very underrated area is the bottom of factory because if two bats there, wolves, a bear above you like and then if you walk down over to dock then you have more bats more wolves more bears oh but looks like a theodore fight is a very hard one because positioning matters a whole lot more but we're just able to play the side of the fight yeah the theodore fights are incredibly difficult to deal with because you you want to be past that field but Playing past that field is so hyper dangerous, and we do actually see the Peacemaker just kind of stalling at the fight where we already had the advantage. Yeah, and I love seeing the heart just pressing ult the second that they're actually in danger. We're not holding it till we're 1 HP. We see someone go on us, we blink away, we ult, and then we just play for our team to come back to us. Yeah, and I think it's really important to understand that heart they're utilizing peacemaker knowing that darko and magnus have already won the fight they already took down the fiora it's darko and magnus versus theo at that point all we just need to do is, is bide our time until our team can come back and we can 1v3 oh, like the last guy yeah and then also making sure that we blink away as we see the kenneth q and then ulting before we know kenneth q is back up because it's very awkward but if you press ult and kenneth is channeling q your ult isn't going to cancel his Q, and if he hits you with it, it'll just cancel your ult because you just get CC'd out of it, and that is probably one of the biggest ways you can lose that fight. You know, I've never seen that happen, but I, I can picture it because, yeah, he gets animation locked, so that would be really awkward for any heart player that ends up doing that. Yeah, one that a lot of heart players would remember is having to fight a Lennox, and Lennox presses E, they press ult, and sadly, now their ult doesn't work. Oh no, my favorite uh, that I have dealt with specifically is me playing on Priya using the pre alt and then heart alt and walks into pre alt and that actually cancels it as well, which is very funny. Oh. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we just don't see Priya spinning in a circle and dancing and we just, we eat the dance as well. 
But it looks like we'll have a fight coming up. We're actually using the GPNVG auto range that we get pretty well. Just walking around corners trying to find an extra auto attack. Making sure that we're not really in threat. And just walking back and forth trying to stay out of loot queue range just after we got hit by the first part. Yeah, and like hard, hard here just like, played like, per like exactly like a traditional ADC. And didn't walk too far knowing that the, like, the Kilo was a threat, waiting until like he had no gap closer and then immediately followed up with a bunch of damage and then only after that did they start utilizing aggressive movement knowing that at this point it's okay if the loop jumps on them is not going to be a threat and they can just 1v uh, or sorry 3v2 them i also like the map movement here we know that we've killed this team and we didn't see them buy on the bottom side in chapel so we just have to assume that they came up and we're going to follow them because let's be real we're, just, we're so much stronger than them Oh, maybe getting hit by infinite CC. <laughs> oh, we have enough time to ult though. But this is still like, this is the problem with the ult. It's, yeah, see, the, the double melee can't help them. Yep. Heart, heart went a little too far up. Instantly blowing up, knows the Magnus can run and buy back. So this is good. Sadly, we will be losing our wick buff though. I wonder how they'll be able to take this fight. It's a 2v3 right now, but they're all pretty low. Oh, we're just sticking the res. <laughs> Magnus scared them off. They didn't go for the follow-up. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised that that was able to go through. I, mean, I thought that Luke was going to come around, but I think he was too focused on trying to make sure he lives. Oh, very unfortunate for our Darko, just barely missing all of his abilities. <laughs> but uh, it happens. Also, Luke coming in. I think he thinks... That, oh, he can! He actually can. Is that Pen Luke? That's probably Pen Luke, right? That's, that's, I mean, that's the only way that he can deal that much damage. He doesn't have a bat skill though, they just... <laughs> this is crazy. That is... That's very unfortunate. I would have liked to see Piolo try and leave the fight though. I feel like he came back when it wasn't required. But also, yeah, we are getting given the blood because we are hearts. I think we probably don't upgrade. No, it doesn't look like yeah. we're going to upgrade, which is interesting to see. I mean, this is just more raw stats, though, so... Um, I mean, looking at the last two teams, I personally would upgrade because I see we have to fight uh, Debbie and Marlene, and we have to fight a Lennox, and presumably a Camillo, who we don't actually know who's dead. Like, I'd like to have the, uh, the extra damage based off of their health, but I guess the pen might out do the uh, the bigger damage but i don't know for sure right no it, it's very possible plus also, I mean, we have electric shock so we do already have like a pseudo effect working for us yeah we do have some percent health damage coming out already and we'd be able to deal with a lot of the lennox shield with it so i think to them they think that they've already got the damage that they need for also, we're buying another blood. I'm wondering what this one's for. Are we going Blood Ripper or? If I had to guess, it's oh, probably Blood it Ripper, looks right? Like, yeah. yeah, it's Blood Ripper for sure. Now it's just, now we're playing for the full pen kind of angle. Oh. Okay, yeah, we are swapping off. I was wondering, cause he's just walking around. Wasn't sure if he's looking for a new item to, to switch it to or not. But I think Blood Ripper is such a good item for Heart. She gets the 60% heal cut, a lot of attack speed, a lot of armor pen. Um, the the attack power on it is okay, but I think it's a. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a lot more than Cube Watch because I don't actually remember if Cube Watch even has any. Oh, okay, it does have 25, 25 attack power versus 28. 28. So plus three attack power coming in massive. I think we're definitely playing for that pen percentage and also just the, the heal cut. 60% is pretty huge. Yeah, but now we should know that it's two teams left. It'll be swapping over to our final battle zones, which I like. I love talking about this. I think that the battles or the final zone changes are amazing. Getting two battle zones into the final zone. It, it just makes every game feel a bit more winnable, even if I'm still crying, but Oh, 100%. It, it I, I, like... I love these. These mechanics are just so fun to try and spin everything around and make a comeback on because there's the, the whole factor of, oh, I'm one person left. 
But if I can somehow trick the other two teams to fight in that other zone and I make it to the to the safe zone, then I get my team back and now I can have my fair 3v3, even though I threw originally. Like I've had moments like that where <laughs> I've I've made an engage against the Wick team, wiped, ratted to uh, second place, get my team back, and then win the game. <laughs> yep, and those games just feel so good. But we are looking at the final two teams now. I think we're probably just going to get a simple play where we have our two front lines walk up, take aggro, make sure we dodge the Martina, and also never go near a wall because this is amp um, I think we're going to also just, probably see oh Hart. Hart's trying to play the neutral, but the uh, Martina's going to do it, and Debbie are going to do it a little bit better than her. But the thing is, is that uh, Hart needs to create an opportunity that makes Magnus and oh, and exactly Magnus makes the opportunity yep. instantly over. Magnus looks for oh my god! Like I, I think that what, this is one of the big reasons why this player is so high elo. Their understanding of of the threats that are able to approach them in a fight are just so insane. The second they see someone dash at them, they're blinking out. They're triple dashing out. Yeah, they, they held the their dashes. Well. They held their dashes perfectly. They didn't use them until an absolutely necessary. Dodging the Martina, dodging the Hanwu, uh, and then Peacemaker stalling out the fight again. Because as, as soon as Magnus got that opportunity, they didn't hesitate. Blew him up instantly. Was in the proper position with having to without having to dash. And uh, I have to agree. I think it's pretty incredible to see this type of mechanical skill on a, on a heart character. All right, and that's uh that's it for this one guys. We'll see you in the next one.